watercolor can be a difficult medium. So what's the appeal for you? It's actually the most unforgiving medium and the most difficult to do. It takes a number of years to really get it under your belt because it's a challenge. Um, I think what I love about watercolor is that it's very fluid, it's not rigid, you have to be very, uh, you have to be able to go with the flow to do it. Um, and you know, when I do on-site work, you never know what's going to happen. So you really have to be somewhat flexible, not only in your vision of what you want to paint, but what you want to happen at the end. A lot of the paintings in the show we're doing, a lot of your watercolors are large scale, very large scale for watercolors. What's your artistic process like? How do you even start out? I think Masmoka, this painting that's behind us, is a great example of the process of how I paint. Yeah. Uh, because I, having painted watercolor for over 40 years, um, actually close to 45 now, um, it's something that I do with, it's a process that I don't really think about. Mm -hmm. And then when I think about it, it really is daunting. Mm -hmm. um, but I would start out, like I, for this painting, um, I first started out with little color studies uh, and little drawings, kind of working out the composition. Mm -hmm. And then come back to my studio, and if it's a really large piece, work on it. Um, but this, I did 40, 40 studies for the finished piece. Wow. So it, there's a lot of thought process that goes into the right. painting before I finish it. Although. I did say it is very loose as well, so mm -hmm. I think it's kind of having the structure before. That allows you to that be loose. That allows you to yeah. be loose at the end. Yeah, that's um, interesting. Yeah. And it's also all those many, many years of painting and looking and seeing, so I have this incredible vocabulary. Right. So I, we should mention this is the largest, believed to be the largest watercolor in the world. And also the largest watercolor by a living um, American artist. Right. And it's a p painting of the interior before they renovated it. So You've been painting in, in Maine for over 40 years. What led you to paint me? Maine's been a source of inspiration for, as you said, for 40 years. I have deep roots to Maine. My family were the first settlers of the um, mid-coast Maine, Vinyl Haven, North Haven, and the peninsula. There's a really deep sense of connection. 40 years is a long time to be coming back to the same place to paint. So I'm curious what keeps you motivated there. And when we look at looking at some of the paintings in our show, like uh, Acadia or Looking Toward Mount Missouri. You know, there's such a particular viewpoint there. And I'm wondering um, how you decide what to paint while you're in Maine and um, how you frame those kind of views and compositions that you have there. I grew up in a family that was very uh, influenced by nature and the outdoors. Landscape and nature are really important in my work. And Acadia National Park is one of the most beautiful places um, to be able to paint. I always look for you paintings that are very mm -hmm. unique. Um, whether it's interior or exterior. I was fortunate I grew up with a mother who was head of the design department at Pratt Art Institute and we had this huge studio in our home so um, I just thought that that's what you did and I would go out painting with her when I was young um, and I'm often asked why I do watercolor but she was just such a strong oil painter because I didn't want to compete with her. I'm just curious when you started um, bringing figures into your work. There's a real mood Know, that they convey. There's always a story behind it. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't go out and do yeah. a painting. It's really, it's 40 years of thinking and looking mm -hmm. and processing. But so those think. fishermen, they're, they're these young fishermen, they took me out to an island to paint. They were just starting off, they were really fresh. I went out yeah. on their boat, these you know, 18 year old with yeah. their dog and they had their pirate flag on them. Yeah. And I ended up painting them instead of um, painting the island. They're, to me it was really about their life and the life of the fishermen. Yeah. Yeah. Another painting I really uh, like is net menders mm -hmm. and that I happen to live next to the lobster co-op in Port Clyde. Um, so for so many years I've been observing the life of the fishermen up in Maine. I know the fishermen personally so yeah. it's really it's, it's a dialogue of examining a painting, not just painting a painting but really mm -hmm. having a very close connection to their story. You have a lot of boats in your paintings. What's the attraction and what's your connection to the boats as a subject? I grew up on Long Island mm -hmm. and my mother's studio looked out on the water. Uh, so I think that there's a long pull, there's a long tradition and yeah. pull. My studio in New York looks out on the water and my, my studio in Maine does as well. So it, there's, um, to me there's a really importance of land and sea and sky in my work. Um, but I'm very interested in the boats. These were all handmade. Yeah. Um, they're really tie into the history of fishing in Maine. There's a very personal connection on uh, yeah. my reason of choosing the boats. And then there are stories. Um, you know, you have two boats together, um, there's loneliness, there's all these different kind of American themes that, that fit in mm -hmm. with that. We have um, a number of your oil paintings in our exhibition. It's a different medium, so what's it like when you paint? What do you think about when you look for subjects for paintings and what's the process like for you? 
Maine has also been, has been very important in my oil painting because that's where I, I went kind of doing the little villages yeah. like, like yep. a Southwest Harbor yep. or Northeast or Port Clyde where I am or Tennis Harbor um, because the architecture is so great. So I actually had done my first painting were in oil paints with my mother. Um, Governor Hugh Carey of New York bought my first oil painting when I was 17. So I'm really, I'm coming back, mm -hmm. and those are all, um, pretty much, they're not studio paintings, these are all on site. Yep. I've done a series of old meeting houses, and the light is about coming that. in, yep. and it has beautiful light, so to me, they're, they're, they're somewhat spiritual, they're mystical, um, they're ephemeral, they're historical. Yep. Um, so I'm always, and it gets back to the boats, I'm always looking for things that really tie in with the land, the yep. sea, um, are handcrafted, yep. and, um, in some ways reflect our humanity. Yeah. Well, I think one of the things that makes me um, different than a lot of other artists is that um, I have a strong, strong academic art historical training. Um, I went to Williams College, I was an art history major, I was fortunate to have worked with Lane Faison who um, was one of the Williams Mafia um, dons and I was the last of the Williams Mafia. Um, and then I went to Harvard and, and continued my art historical training and I was awarded a Fulbright um, for my work, so I was able to paint and live in um, Europe for almost four years working, and I was always drawing, painting, um, and I actually have a whole series of my travel paintings from that time. And then I had a grant from the Henry Luce Foundation, who was actually a big supporter of my work as well, um, and he was a great supporter of American art, um, to live in Taiwan, so I was able oh, wow. to travel and paint for a year in Asia. Um, and that really informed my work too because I, I studied Chinese um, brush painting. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at your bigger work, there's the White House Christmas card. We've got um, paintings for NASA. Um, we've got, you know, paintings all over the country and internationally. So I'm just curious, what, um, you know, how you decide on these projects. Are they sort of happy accidents? Or are they things you really think about? And are there other challenges that you're kind of wanting to try with this medium or other mediums? Interestingly, they're all happy accidents. All yeah. of them have been phone calls, um, unexpected. Yeah. Um, and I think NASA really ties in with the Earth, Sea, Sky because that was, yeah. uh, NASA commissioned me to do four paintings for their collection. Um, two are on exhibit at the Kennedy Space Center. Um, one's at NASA headquarters, and then I did the X-43, which is the fastest aircraft in the world. Oh, wow. Um, out at Edwards Air Force Base, which is really cool to be, to watch that take yeah. off, and I was right next to the, right next to the runway. Um, for that, I spent half a year researching my NASA work, just as I spent a lot of time researching this painting here. And so it's not just I go and I paint a painting, but it's um, I have talked about the kind of the intellectual, um, uh, academic education I have, and I think that really comes into play yeah. with creating your put it all together, and then you create the painting, mm -hmm. uh, the di distillation. Um, NASA really gave me a universal perspective from working on the International Space Station. Mm -hmm. And then the White House Christmas card was just a call from First Lady Laura Bush to do the card for the White House. Yeah. And um, I've been fortunate to spend a lot of time at the White House and to draw all over the White House. Mm -hmm. uh, and we ended up doing the diplomatic reception room. So I'm two, one of two living uh, female artists who are in the collection of the White House. I've been fortunate to have some really great um, patrons and collectors when I first started out. Um, including the Rockefellers, the Mellons, Henry Luce. So part of our mission at the Wendell Gilly Museum is really trying to help people um, connect with their own creativity, um, also connect with nature and the world around them. I'm wondering if you have any thoughts about um, you know, how, you've, how you've connected with creativity and how you've helped other people to do that, or words of encouragement or thoughts for uh, painters out there or artists. I think it's always looking and doing, and mm -hmm. something that's in your inner spirit. It's so important. Um, I know a lot of our work at the National Endowment for the Arts is um, inspiring, encouraging, um, as I said, the arts in America, but all sorts of creativity. It's basically how you see the world and what you add.